Hi, I'm Jackson Radish, um, and today I'm going to book talk a couple books that are from the same publishing company. Um, the publishing company is Topside Press, and um, I'm going to talk about that a little bit first. It is a brand new publishing company that is focused on publishing books by transgender authors, um, featuring transgender characters, and it's different than a lot of what is out there in literature because it's really focused on um, literary fiction, whereas a lot of existing trans literature is memoir and nonfiction and theory. Um, so this is really focused on creating a literary voice for trans people. Um, I'll talk about the collection first. It is um, it was just released in October, and um, of 2012, and. It is, um, it was sort of their kickoff um, publication. It is um, a collection of uh, uh, 28 short stories um, by 28 different authors. So I, I wanted to quickly first um, start off by reading a little passage from one of the stories. I, I chose this story because it's one of my favorites, um, but also because it's, it's one that is free to read on their website. Um, if you want to get a, more of a taste for the book before you buy it or look for it in your library. Um, so this story is called A Roman Incident by Red Durkin. Red Durkin is um, a pretty successful trans woman comedian. Um, um, she's coming out with a novel this summer called Ready Amy Fire. She closed her eyes and counted down from ten. At zero, the world completely exploded. Lights flashed, Buzzards flared, and a crowd of thousands, surging like a vortex, crashed into the security gate. Their cacophonous excitement splashed into the stage, along with the waves of their beer. Charlie was face down in the fourth mouthful of chicken when Pavlovian reflex gave way to human awareness, and she realized what was happening. The world, the Hooters World Wing Eating Championship had begun. Her destiny was at the bottom of a pile of poultry parts. In front of her, she couldn't afford to be reckless. Every wing had to be clean in order to count, and so she quickly rendered each one polished to the bone before moving on to the next one. Behind her, a gorgeous girl in emphatically tight orange shorts held a scorecard over her head. The woman bounced and smiled and cheered, faking her enthusiasm the way Charlie imagined her mother had taught her. In part of her heart, Charlie would always bear hateful jealousy for women like this. She begrudged them their big, friendly breasts, their hips, their happily bulging hips, and the legible parts of their body that spoke woman in every language. Charlie's inscrutable frame would never carry that confident kind of currency and she scorned the pretty girls for their oblivious luck. When she was nine, she posted a note on the fridge that said, Charlie is a girl, and she needs new clothes. End of discussion. Some years earlier, to get out of an intervention, Charlie's father had declared that the words, end of discussion, meant exactly that in the Eagle Horn household. It was family law. The phrase had been employed when she was 12 and demanded to go on hormones, and most recently, at 17, when she declared her intention to become a professional speed eater. Um, so I'm not going to read the rest of the story. Um, it's great, it's funny, and really moving. Um, and it's just one example of um, the stories in this book. Um, so all these stories sort of have different feelings. Um, uh, the book kind of weaves together well because there are kind of exciting and magical and weird things happening in each one, and each story features a trans character. Um, it's a, a really fun book to read. I would recommend it to um, anyone, not just trans people. Um, the stories in this book are special, though, because most of them are not stories about transitioning or dealing with being trans. They're mostly stories where a trans character's life is sort of explored, um, and sometimes the fact that they're trans features prominently in that, and sometimes it's just a little incidental. And um, so that's kind of special, there's not a lot out there like that, and um, 
the stories are really great on their own, whether or not you are particularly interested in reading stories about trans people. Um, so now I'm going to talk about Nevada by Imogen Binney, which um, was, was just recently released. Um, I think the official release date hasn't come yet, um, but the pre-orders have been uh, earlier this month. Um, uh, it is it's um, a road trip novel, um, and it's great. But um, one of the things I love about this book is that it um, it deals with a lot of heavier stuff that is often only has only been discussed in um, sort of more theory type books. Um, but it kind of deals with them in a really relatable way that sort of incorporates them into the life of this character who um, is a really the most realistic trans character that I've read in a novel probably ever and also just um, a really kind of funny relatable woman um, and so I am going to read a passage from this this is from the second chapter um, page five uh, this is what it's like to be a trans woman. Maria works in, enormous, in an enormous used bookstore in Lower Manhattan. It is a terrible place. She's been working there for something like six years. People quit all the time because not everybody can deal with the abuse that comes from this job. Maria, though, is so emotionally closed off and has so much trouble having any feelings at all that she's like, well, it's you. Know, I'm making enough to afford my apartment. I know how to get away with pretty much anything I want to get away with. I'm not leaving unless they fire me. But when she started working there, she was like, hello, I'm a dude, and my name is the same one that's on my birth certificate. Then, when she had been working there for a year or two, she had this kind of intense, scary realization that for a really long time, as boring and cliche as it is, but for as long as she could remember, she had felt all fucked up. So she wrote about it. She laid out and connected all these dots. The, sometimes I want to wear dresses, dog. The, I'm addicted to masturbation, dog. The, I feel like I have been punched in the stomach when I see an unself-conscious pretty girl, dog. And then I cry a lot when I was little, and I don't think I've cried at all since puberty, dog. Lots of other dogs, a constellation of dogs. So she figured out that she was trans, told people she was changing her name, got on hormones. It was very difficult and rewarding and painful. Whatever. It was a very special episode. The point is, just, there are people at her job that remember when she was supposed to be a boy, who remember when she transitioned, and who might at any point tell any of the new people who come to work with her that she is trans. And then she has to do damage control. Because remember, how is she supposed to know what weird ideas these people have about trans women? Like, what if they are liberal? and want to show how much compassion they have. I have a trans friend instead of, hey, trans friend, I like you. Let's have a three-dimensional human relationship. That's what it's like to be a trans woman. Never being sure who knows you're trans or what that knowledge would even mean. Being unsure, weird social footing. It's not even like a matter if someone knows you're trans. Who cares? You just don't want hilarious, charming, complicated, weirder self to be erased by any ideas people have in their heads that were made up by, like, hack TV writers or even hack your internet porn writers. It just sucks having to educate people. Sound familiar? Trans women have the exact same shit that everybody else in the world who isn't white, had male, able-bodied, or otherwise privileged. It's not glamorous or mysterious. It's boring. Maria is totally exhausted by it. And bored of it. And if you're not, she's sorry. Terribly, appallingly, sarcastically, uselessly, and pointlessly sorry. Um, yeah, so that's a passage from Nevada. Um, I, I, I really like the book because it, um, I really like the book because it deals with the story of a trans woman, but um, she's, she transitioned six years ago, and so it's not really dealing with a lot of the um, transition-y things that, um, you know, she sums up her whole transition in that it was a very special episode. And then the rest of the book is kind of this story of her, you know, kind of transition and then what next. Um, so it's, it's a great story. 
It's The Collection, edited by Tom Roger and Riley McLeod, and Nevada by Imogen Binning, both from Topside Press. Um, thanks.